Today we have a case where we plan in the extractions and we plan the implementations and we want to plan everything accordingly so we'll have the option to be minimally invasive and have the best possible temporary solutions for this case. Uh, in here what we want to show is how we plan the extractions and the implementations and made a temporary bridge. So what we see here is this is a city that was made after the implantations, but we have an inflammation around tooth number 15. So this tooth needs to be extracted. The patient has on his upper jaw a bridge. So in this case, because of the inflammation, we'll cut the bridge uh, between tooth number 13 and 14. 14 is a pontic and we'll place an implant instead of tooth number 14. So what we want to do is we're placing two implants before the procedure. We have the osteointegration, integration. Then we cut the bridge in between 13 and 14 mm -hmm. and we place in an implant. This way, when we have two implants already osteointegrated, integrated we can load the three implants, one of them just uh, inserted into the jaw and two osteointegrated. integrated we can remove a little bit from occlusion those both uh, those teeth and the patient will have some kind of aesthetic solution for the upcoming two three months you can see here the tooth that with the inflammation you can see here the fistula in the future we'll cut between the 13 and 14 tooth in there you can see the place where we placed two implants you have enough bone yeah you have enough bone you can we, we don't see it on the, on the CT, but in this case, yes, you have enough bone, you have enough uh, thickness. We have two implants. We cut the bridge in between 13 and 14, and we extract the tooth with the pontic and with the crown already, everything at once. So in this case, the, the implant that we'll place will be instead of 14. We don't want to place the implant inside the socket, because you, you had an inflamed uh, tooth there, you have uh, problems with the tooth, you don't want to place an implant in inf inflamed area. No, you don't want to. You need it to heal. There you need to heal first. Yeah, you probably want to heal. You, you want to, to go to the safe place uh, and not to risk it. Mm -hmm. So healing first and then drilling after. Yeah. But in here you can place near the, the inflamed part so you can at the moment of the, of the extraction, place the implant. Here you can see the, extra, the socket of the extracted tooth and we have the implant uh, approximately to the socket. You can see here three multi-unit scan abutments. Three of them is for V-type multi-units. This is the angle? Yeah, the, the, the three implants are uh, quite parallel. You can see that the screw channel uh, goes a little bit to the buccal side. But in this case, right now, we don't want to use angulate multi-units because we don't know what will be the, end, the, the height of the gingiva after the healing process. So we'll use straight multi-units. Later on, when we'll make another temporary bridge or when we'll make, uh, get pre more prepared for the zirconia bridge, we'll change probably the straight multi-units to an angulated one. So we are putting straight for the gingiva to heal. Yeah, the, the easiest part is to put straight multi-units. For the te temporary bridge, you can mask with composite material the openings of the screw channels. So you don't have any problems. You don't want in the healing process with all the blood, with all the, the inflammation, start using and get multi-units. And uh, you can make it much more simpler. You can put three straight multi-units and then you, you'll change in the future from straight multi-units to angulated one when you'll know what height of gingiva you'll have. Is this is the temporary bridge? Yeah. In this case, you don't have any, any teeth uh, opposite to those two molars. You have only uh, in occlusion with uh, tooth number 14. So tooth number 14, you, you'll want to make a little bit shorter. So you won't have any excessive forces because it's an implant you just placed. But all in all, you know that you're quite safe because you already have to also integrate the implants. So this bridge will, will hold, will be fine, will be quite strong on those three implants. We close the screw channels and as we said before, we know that we have uh, 
the screw channel goes into the buckle side. In the future, we will change too and integrate multi-unit, but right now, in this case, it's it's very hard to place and get multi-units and do all this procedure while you have an open flap and a lot of blood and inflamed area. You want to make it as easy as possible. So you place straight multi-units, you make a uh, temporary bridge, you'll give it a few months to heal, you'll mask it the screw channel with a little bit of composite so it won't be seen. And later on, you'll take another impression and you'll make with angular multi-unit the right angle with the right height of gingiva and you won't see the screw channel at all. So planning, planning, planning. Yeah. This is the your tip. Yeah. Plan ahead. Plan ahead. Everything you do in order to not get surprised. Exactly. Thank you very much for being with us here today. You're welcome. And thank you for being with us. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and follow to stay tuned up to date. Have a great week.